In this video, we will be reviewing the disassembly and reassembly of the second and third stages of the RIX 2V3B compressor. We will start with the third stage. First, disconnect the discharge line from the stainless steel T fitting using an 11 16 wrench. Cover open lines with blue painter's tape or a clean glove. Remove the stainless steel T fitting from the cylinder head, being careful to not tangle the wire. Remove the suction line. Loosen the plug on the cylinder head with a 9 16 wrench. Remove the two nuts from the cylinder head with a half inch wrench. Remove the cylinder head and place it on a clean work surface. Remove the head plug and use a plastic drift to push out the valve assembly. During regular service, all O-rings and reed valves are removed and replaced. Notice the valve plate. This side is the suction side and faces toward the cylinder. The other side is the discharge side, which faces the cylinder head. To assemble the cylinder head and valve assembly, make sure that a pin is in the bottom hole of the cylinder head. With the discharge side of the valve plate facing up, place a reed valve as shown so that the tail end of the valve covers the three holes. Flip the valve assembly and reed valve over together. Remove the reed valve from the bottom without changing its orientation. Place the reed valve in the cylinder head so that the hole aligns with the pin. Place an O-ring on the discharge side of the valve plate. Insert the valve plate into the cylinder head with the discharge side facing down. Using light downward pressure, Rotate the valve plate with a soft drift until the pin is aligned in the valve plate seats. Place an O-ring on top of the valve seat. Using a soft drift, push the O-ring into the groove. Place a reed valve on top of the valve seat so that the tail of the reed valve covers the three holes. Ensure that the pin is present in the valve seat. Place the valve seat cover on top of the reed valve so that the flat side is up. Place an O-ring into the recess on the valve seat. Insert the head plug. Tighten by hand. Remove the third stage cylinder and piston. Place them in a clean work area. Remove and replace the rider ring from the rod follower. Using a soft drift, push the piston out of the cylinder head. Check the cylinder bore for signs of wear. Any scratch that can be felt by a soft pick or gloved finger may be cause for concern. Remove the compression rings from the piston with a pick. Next, remove the O-rings. To easily install the new O-rings, first put 8 O-rings on the small end of the piston insertion tool. Then, load the piston into the insertion tool. Begin to pull the piston out of the insertion tube. Roll the O-rings off the tool into each groove as they are exposed. Install a new compression ring in every groove. There are 8 in total. Push the bottom of the piston into the wide end of the insertion tool. Holding the insertion tool tight against the top of the cylinder, 
Use a soft drift to push the piston into the top of the cylinder. Finally, replace the O-ring on the bottom of the third stage cylinder. To remove the second stage, first loosen and remove the discharge and suction lines from the second stage head using an 11 16 wrench. Make sure to cover all open lines with painter's tape or a clean glove. Remove the four nuts and washers holding the second stage head on the cylinder. Remove the second stage cylinder head. Place it on a clean work surface. Remove the second stage valve assembly by using a 564 hex key to unscrew the two cap head screws. The valve plate assembly should now fall out. Notice the discharge side and the suction side. During normal service, all O-rings and reed valves will be removed and replaced. Use a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two screws holding the suction side reed valves. Note there are two reed valves on the discharge side. Use the same screwdriver to remove the screw holding the suction side reed valve. Note there is only one reed valve on the suction side. Replace the suction and reed valves the same way they were taken out. Insert new O-rings into the valve plate. Make sure to coat the O-rings with Crytox lubricant. Pull off the second stage cylinder and place it on a clean work surface. Remove the rider ring from the second stage piston. Remove all four compression rings using a pick. Remove all four O-rings with a pick. Replace with new ones. Place a new rider ring on the bottom groove. Install four new compression rings.
remove and replace the large O-ring located on the top of the second stage cylinder. Crytox will help the O-ring stay in position. Install the second stage cylinder onto the second stage piston. Be careful that compression rings are not folded over. Slight side to side motion will help work the compression rings into the cylinder. Next, the cylinder head can be placed onto the cylinder. Be careful that the head mates well with the cylinder and that the tube connections line up. If this is not the case, the cylinder body or head may need to be rotated. Reinstall the four nuts and washers on the second stage cylinder head. Tighten the bolts in a star pattern with a torque wrench. Increase the torque slowly in steps of 5 to 10 foot-pounds until 30 foot-pounds is reached. Connect the discharge and suction lines. Replace the third stage cylinder and cylinder head as one piece. Install the two nuts and washers on the cylinder head. Tighten the bolts with a torque wrench. Increase the torque slowly in steps of 5 foot-pounds until 15 foot-pounds is reached. Reconnect the stainless T as well as the suction and discharge lines to the third stage. <laughs>